Newsmax has been told by senior intelligence officials in the United States government that there is a 40% chance that Vladimir Putin will use a nuclear weapon on Ukraine, and it could happen soon. A 40% chance. That is really, really high and very, very disturbing, obviously. And it looks like Putin is being backed into a corner. I don't like Putin, but he's running out of options. And what will he do? 40%. How do we find ourselves in this position? How? Why did he invade Ukraine in the first place? I think there were three key moments that led to his decision to go in. Number one, in the summer of 21, he met with Joe Biden in Switzerland. And take a look at Joe. Take a look. Does that look like a, a skilled negotiator? No, it doesn't. I think Vladimir made an assessment of Joe and thought, this is my chance. That's what I believe. Also, the entire world saw the debacle of our withdrawal from Afghanistan. Again, did that show strength or weakness? Did that show uh, an administration with its act together or one engulfed in chaos? I think this was a major, major signal. And then Joe Biden actually himself gave conflicting, confusing signals, maybe not even so confusing. Was this a green light? He said this just before the invasion. I'm not so sure he has uh, is certain what he's going to do. My guess is he will move in. He has to do something. He has to do something. Remember when Trump said, don't do it, Kim Jong-un. You will see fire and fury like no one has ever seen. My guess is he's going to have to do it. He's got to do something. And he did. Russia moved in to Ukraine and pulverized parts of that country and have committed numerous atrocities. Horrible, horrible things have happened in Ukraine because of this Russian invasion. For a while there, they were celebrating. They celebrated way too early because the Ukrainian pushback has been amazing. It has shocked the world with its effectiveness, and they have taken back key territory, key cities. But that brings us back to Putin who's running out of options. He is isolated, he's alone, he is panicking. He declared martial law in four parts of Ukraine. Russia can confiscate property, confiscate homes, force people into military service, force Ukrainians into the Russian army. That may be the policy on paper. I don't think it's gonna work. He's running out of options. Now, in some regard, Joe Biden has been, well, look, He's kept them well-funded. The Ukrainians, lots of equipment going over there. That's good. But some of this rhetoric, I think he's gone too far. And it's Putin. It's Vladimir Putin who is to blame, period. Putin has shattered peace in Europe and attacked the very, very tenets of rule-based order. For God's sake, this man cannot remain power. Well... That sounds great. That's tough, tough stuff. But he's not leaving Putin many options, is he? Or the world. So take a look at this. Putin's by himself. He's cut off. He's isolated. And how does he get out of this? Now, have you ever heard of Sun Tzu? <laughs> Sun Tzu was an ancient Chinese uh, warrior slash philosopher. And he wrote a very important book centuries ago that is still studied in military academies all over the world. The Art of of war. And there's a very compelling quote in here, many, but take a look at this. Build your opponent a golden bridge to retreat across. You have to leave your opponent some options. It looks like we're not doing that. And his only option may be the nuclear button. I mean, of course it's not, but is that what he's thinking? Joe Biden got us into this mess and nobody's talking about peace. Nobody. I'd like to see a settlement, maybe. Um, I want Ukraine to get all that stuff back, but what did John Lennon say? Give peace a chance. Yes, I know, it's corny, yes, I know, but no one has been talking about peace. Now, there are some positive things that have been happening. Of course, we are so amazed and thrilled by what Ukraine has done and the, the boldness, the bravery of the people. Nobody likes uh, Vladimir Putin. And countries around the world have taken note. 
You know, China, at one point, it looked like they were weeks away from invading Taiwan. Well, they see what's going on in Ukraine and Russia, how Putin is now a pariah. I don't think President Xi wants that. And no one seems to think right now that an invasion of Taiwan is imminent. So a 40 percent chance, a 40 percent chance. Let's pray that this does not happen. If that happens, everything changes. And maybe what Joe Biden, when he was mouthing off the other day, he was onto something. He said Armageddon. We're close to Armageddon. By the way, look at him. Look at him. We're close to Armageddon, inflation out of control, get all the problems we have. And he's, you know what he's doing? We've noticed he's licking and lying his way through his presidency. Just lies and licks, tells lies and licks that ice cream cone. Uh, he was doing that today. Uh, let's debunk some myths here. My administration has not stopped or slowed U.S. oil production. Quite the opposite. Oh, man, this is what he does. He lies. He lies. He lies. He lies. Let's go through it. We got 57 things he did. Here are the highlights. Suspends oil and gas leases on public lands and waters in his first month in office. On his first day in office, he stopped the Keystone Pipeline. Next, please. Uh, he suspended drilling licenses in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Hello. He urged the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, to investigate U.S. oil and gas. In February of this year, he halted oil gas leases amid legal fight on the climate coast. What else? demanded higher taxes, fees on U.S. oil and gas. This stuff doesn't help. Biden administration cancels Alaska oil and gas lease sale. He cut acreage for drilling by 80 percent. No drilling on 30 percent of federal lands water by 2030. They have offered fewer acres for oil and gas drilling, less than any other administration since the end of World War II. Now, I will give this to Joe Biden. All these things he did he actually said he would do. Number one, no more subsidies for fossil fuel industry, no more drilling on federal lands, no more drilling, including offshore, no ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. Ends. Number one. Wow. Yeah, he was pretty thr And he got up real close to some girl he liked on the campaign trail and said the same thing. I want you to look in my eyes. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, we're going to end fossil fuel, and I am not going to cooperate with you, okay? Wow. And what did he say just a matter of hours ago? Uh, let's debunk some myths here. My administration has not stopped or slowed U.S. oil production. Quite the opposite. He is a liar. He's been doing it ever since he, I guess... When he was a child, I mean, this is deep stuff. This is, this is congenital, I think, right? And oh, he seems to really resent oil companies. It's very easy to badmouth corporate America, and he, I think, actually envies them. Listen to this. We're going to make sure that everybody knows Exxon's profits. Why don't you tell them what Exxon's profits were this year, this quarter? Exxon made more money than God this year. Yeah, he wants some of that money. There's something kind of, there's an avarice to his tone. And let's talk about ExxonMobil. I have no beef with Exxon. I don't. I go to the gas station. It was always there. It was cheap. It was no big deal. The gas station's clean. They've got a Tiger Mart for food. I have no problem with Exxon. I got a problem with this administration. And let's meet the uh, CEO of ExxonMobil. His name is Darren Woods. You know what? He earned his way, he worked his way up the ladder. Started at Exxon when he was 28 years old. Went to Texas A&M, got a degree in engineering. There are 63,000 people who work at Exxon and this guy made it to the top. Good for him. Joe Biden, meanwhile, what does he know about the private sector, huh? He spent two years, two years after law school before becoming a city councilman, and two years after that, a United States senator. Now, this guy is lecturing private industry about how to do their job. I'm with Exxon, not Joe, because this guy is a liar. This is when I first actually became aware of Joe Biden. It was in 1987 
right around when he had to quit the presidential campaign in disgrace because he was caught lying and plagiarizing. Do you feel you're able to control, to put in the vernacular of your mouth, that you can think before you talk? Well, I've been in this business for 15 years. Um, and uh, I, uh, um, I let my record of 15 years versus the transgression that you're referring to uh, stand. And you, can make, you all can make that judgment. I feel very capable of uh, using my mouth in sync with my mind. They were asking him this question when he was in his 40s, his mid-40s. Do you think you can think before you can talk? That's 30 years ago. We are in trouble. We are in big trouble. But hope is on the way. Less than three weeks before the midterms, and I don't think he makes it another year. We'll be right back. Crime is number one issue in America. Something else that Joe is ignoring. We'll be right back.